Welcome to Candid Conversations. I'm Roberta Quimson, your host, and this is season two of Discovering Your Divine Design. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. What an awesome day we're going to have. I am so excited to have as a guest on my show today, Desiree Rosado. Oh, I, we are going to get into it, and this is going to be great. We have so many wonderful things to talk about and share and learn. But before we do, let's open up in prayer. Father, thank you for this glorious day. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for the ability to be able to share your word everywhere because of this beautiful gift of technology. Lord, I pray for everyone who is listening today that they would just know how much you love them, how beautiful they are in your sight. And Lord, let our words be an encouragement to all who hear and let us point everyone back to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, good morning and welcome, <laughs> Des. How are you today? Good morning. I'm really good. Thank God. Great. I'm awesome. Great. Why don't you share a little bit? Where are you chiming in from? I know we are in two different time zones. Yes, I am in Connecticut, uh, Ledger, Connecticut, to be specific. Nice. Over here on the East Coast. It's beautiful. Fall. Little chilly. But little chilly good. and i am all the way over here in california we are technology really lets us amazing? go all the way across right isn't that wonderful i, I love, love that. that i love that <laughs> so um i am excited about what we're going to talk about today i want to start by letting everyone know and sharing a little bit that you have an amazing podcast that you do with your husband i yes. follow you and i love listening to it oh, um share that. a little bit about that okay so yeah my husband and i we've been married for almost 28 years and we've we've had a lot of uh experience in marriage uh ministry and just really god taking us through a lot of inner healing a lot of a lot of stuff i could write like five books anyways (laughs) so so about it's been about a year i think about a year ago maybe a little bit more a little bit more was when we kind of felt the tug to do something like a podcast something where we could share because we were doing like little videos on Facebook and stuff Mm -hmm. like that but we wanted to do something consistently and we really felt like it was time to really commit to something okay and I'm very techie so I was the one to like dig into all the stuff and look for the equipment and everything and and we started it's called walk the talk with Des and Los his name is Carlos my name is Desiree I'm Des for short um and that was when it started it was a rough start because I'm sure if I go back and listen to my first one it's probably a little scary now (laughs) (laughs) I haven't done that I actually thought about that because I know we've grown a lot and we're also you know we've developed ourselves in our our speaking our communicating really trying to work on that so that we're not sitting here like oh oh, oh, oh," you know in our podcast but it was kind of an answer to a call or yes, an answer to a call. And it's been a blessing because we've had a lot of really good feedback and we are also family pastors in our church. So we are, we're like right now we're in a whole series on the family. We've been talking about fatherlessness, uh, the Proverbs 31 woman right now we're talking about marriage. So We just, whatever God puts in our hearts, we have a whole long list of things that we'll be talking about, but that's our podcast. And we are on YouTube now. We just started recording videos. So we're everywhere. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we're going to make sure that um, everybody can start to follow you or watch you. All your links are going to be um, down there underneath the video. (laughs) Um, That is great. Tell me a little bit about your story. I know that you and I have very similar passions of understanding the call of a woman, understanding the Proverbs 31, who you are in Christ. Um, We both have a lot of that understanding your giftings, your callings. Um, There's such a, wouldn't you agree? There is such, I would feel you and I both have lived kind of in like the BC, like the before Christ and after Christ. (laughs) There's such this freedom There's this freedom, like this release that you can just put out there when you're like, I know who I am. My daddy's a king. Like there's just this amazing (laughs) weight that gets lifted off. Tell me a little bit about what it was like for you when you got to that 
space, you know? Oof, gosh, it was, it was a process because I'll just go a tiny little bit into earlier as a child, I was very, very bound by fear. It was a lot of it was generational stuff and Mm -hmm. a lot of the things that I went through as a child. And so coming into adulthood, getting married and then having children, I didn't realize how much it affected me, but it affected me to the point where I wouldn't even, I wouldn't speak if I was always the one that wanted to be in the background. So when Carlos and I would do anything in ministry or anything in the church, he would be the one I'd like push him forward. Like you speak, you talk. Cause <laughs> right, I was right, ter- right. terrified of the microphone. I was terrified of being in front of people. I was afraid of everything. So listening to Joyce Meyer has been like one of the biggest life changers for me since I right. was about maybe 19, I think. And it was through her ministry, listening to her that I realized that this was a thing that you could be bound by fear. Mm-hmm. And so I, long story short, I, I, years and years and years, I really, um, I ran after God in that. I was like, God, cause like, I, I kind of knew God. I'll say like, I knew of him. I received him as my savior, but like, I didn't have that real intimate walk with him. So, so he was your like, savior, but not your Lord. Yes. Exactly. We just talked about that. Actually, a group of friends of mine were talking about And it's one of the things I'm really passionate about too, is that when you are like, well, Jesus is my Lord and savior. We're like, but really, because your savior is you're like, I got my get out of hell card. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) But your Lord, that's totally different. Totally different. Yes. And that was that process. And so I had to really, I had to lay things down. I had to be willing to let him into all those deep places in my heart. And eventually I got set free from fear And when that started to happen, I realized that I had a voice and Mm. people would, people would, uh, want to listen to me. And that was foreign for me because I was so used to always being in the back. So a lot of the, the moments of obedience for me was God's giving me these opportunities to be like, I want you to do this. I want you to speak here. I want you to do this. And in me kicking and screaming, like, I don't want to, but okay. I love you, Jesus. And I'm going to do anything for you. And I want to help people. I want to help women. I want to, you know, just be obedient, you know? So one of them was, it's actually kind of a cool thing was I was asked to speak in front of the Senate um, back. Nice. Yeah. You want to talk about fear of public (laughs) speaking. You were on the Senate floor. It was, it was insane. I remember I'm sitting here, like I was a mother with three little kids at home and they were fighting for paid sick days. And I happened to submit a testimony of what, you know, how we were affected by it because my kids all ended up with the, I think it was a swine flu back then. Oh, okay. Yes. And yes, how I that affected that. our family and the reason why we needed to have paid sick days for employees. And it helped actually win that, which was amazing. And then we won it for Connecticut. But I remember I was back then I was like, and they were like doing a quick uh, run through of, okay, this is how you're going to speak. We have everything written out for you. Let's rehearse this. Let's how you're going to sit and how you're going to position yourself. And I'm sitting here like, whoa, so overwhelmed. But I was like, I felt like God in it. I knew somehow this was him pulling something out of me and it was such a good experience. It was scary as anything. I traveled alone for the first time in my life. It was like so many big things happening. And after it was over, I was like, wow, like I knew that was part of something that I was supposed to do, you know? And so oh, awesome. that was just one. There's been a lot of others, but that's I like realized... a bucket list, baby. I spoke on the Senate floor. It's yeah. wild, right? That's on your I, resume. I, <laughs> that's funny. I never thought of that. But yeah, I have I have took so many pictures. I got a tour and all kinds of fun stuff. But that was such an amazing experience. And I, I it like it shifted something in me. And it was such a, a very big part of my walk because that being I could have said no. I could have said no, I don't, I'm not gonna do that. Who am I? But I felt like God telling me, say yes. And I was like, wow, okay, I'm terrified out of my mind. And I felt like my knees were shaking, but I did it afraid. Like Joyce Meyer says, I love that phrase, do it afraid, because 
a lot of times you feel the fear, right? Yeah. Especially if that's something that you deal with. And I did a lot of those times I felt fear, but I chose to do it even in the midst of the fear. And it's amazing how, when you take the step, how Holy spirit empowers you Mm -hmm. and then you're there and it's like, it disappears and you're just like free. And I feel like after a lot of those moments, I got to this place where it was like, I was free of the fear. I knew who I was, you know, even the fear even kept me from really approaching God the way that I wanted to having the intimacy with him that I wanted to have and knowing him closely. So when that was gone and my heart was healed of so many things, it was, it was life-changing. And I was like, wow, this is what it's like. This is what I've always wanted. You're everything to me. You are my Lord. You are my savior. You're my father. You're everything. Right. And it was in that place and having those moments with him where he just deposited in me and showed me who I am. And he showed me that he wanted to use my voice, that I had a story that was to help other women to either not make the same mistakes or to come out of where they are and be the women that God called them to be. Yes. Amen. Yes. You know, scripture is so clear when it says the Lord does not give us a spirit of fear. And I love to help women understand that not having a spirit of fear doesn't mean you don't get afraid. That is a natural physiological response. Okay. Back, you know, before what we know now is life. It's okay Mm -hmm. to be afraid because a lion may come get you. Okay. Exactly. Right. Right. There's a really (laughs) big fire, which could, you know, I'm cooking, but then the fire gets out of control. There's a big problem. Yes. I'm scared. (laughs) I must run. Like that is exactly fear is a normal thing that we need. Yes. But when the scripture says he did not give us a spirit of fear. And I love how you said that. That was so profound when you said that kind of living within that spirit of fear actually was a little bit of a barrier to your intimacy, because how do we have true intimacy with God? Right. What did Jesus say? I am going, but I will leave you a helper. My spirit yes. will be with you. Our yes. intimacy with the Lord is through the catalyst and the vehicle of the Holy Spirit. But if the Holy Spirit can't get to where the Holy Spirit needs to be because the spirit of fear, I mean, when you really think about it, okay, it's like you're trying Mm -hmm. to, you know, push a square peg into a round hole. Exactly. Things aren't working. And it's so amazing that when that spirit of fear was removed, that it was like, you know, it's like I equated to, when we go to visit islands, right? When we go to either the Caribbean or the Caymans or something like that, because I'm a beach girl and I love the water thing. (laughs) And, but I live here in California, in Northern California, where people will come to the beaches here and they're like, that's not, that's a cold, (laughs) that's a cold (laughs) water, right? We've kind of gotten used to it, but it's not my favorite. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the Caymans or Florida and it's like, there's no, you know, there's no step by step and splashing, and you're like, oh, yes, oh, right. You, if you've ever been in those tropical waters where you just start walking and you're just like, oh, there's like bath water, right? This is beautiful, it's and amazing. you just keep walking all the way in, like nothing stops you, right? Yes. And having that spirit like of that. fear, living in the Lord, think of it like the water, and the spirit yes. of fear is when you're in like the cold ocean and you're, you're <laughs> towing. And yes. you want to get in there. The intention is to get in the water. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got to kind of get mm-hmm. used to it. Yes. And releasing that spirit of fear and letting the Holy Spirit just really embrace and engulf you is like that tropical where you just walk in and go, oh my God, like this, where yes. have you been all my life, That's right? <laughs> that, and that was the visual I got when you were saying mm. about how, when the spirit of fear was gone, how you just like this new freedom, this new identity And so, so what would you then as somebody who's walked through it and I'm somebody who's walked through it to a listener who is sitting there right now going that I haven't felt that yet. I want that. Mm -hmm. What are maybe if, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I'm sure we could between (laughs) the two of us think of something, what are like your top three or, you know, what would you say to that woman about 
wanting to be fully, you know, in the water and embraced from that Holy Spirit and knowing that there could be now for some women, it could be, it could be a fear for some women. It could be a lack of confidence for yes. some women. It could be simply that just a lack of knowledge. They were never mm -hmm. raised or told you are a daughter of the most high who has been anointed yes. and gifted with something. Not everybody right. has the gift of speaking. Not everybody has the gift yeah. of teaching, but what if you have the gift of serving? What if you have the gift That's of right. helps? Yes. What if you are like, I love to entertain. I used to always do birthday parties for my kids. I love to do like the big thing. I didn't know I could use that like in a kingdom way. What yes. would you say to that woman who's saying, I want that whole water, you know, experience. I'm not, I want that. I'm not there. Yes. Yes. What would you say as, as a good way to start? I would say the first thing that comes to me is don't compare yourself to other people. That is a big thing in our society that especially with women, women tend to compare themselves to other people and look at other people like, oh, well, I don't do that or I can't do that. Mm. But like you said, everybody has different gifts. And if it's hospitality, if it's serving, I know some people even just in our church that are the most amazing, they have such a servant's heart and mm -hmm. they know they're so good at putting together events and doing all of the things in the kitchen or whatever it is. And they're gifted for it and they love it mm -hmm. because they found that that's their, that's their vein. That's what God has put in them to do. Yep. And whatever it is that God has put in you to do, you need, you're needed. God needs every one of us. Like you said, not everyone is called to speak mm -hmm. and that's okay. None of us is greater than another. It's no. something I love to, I love to talk about as the body of Christ. We are a body and just like mm -hmm. a physical body, we need all of our parts. Yeah. Right. There was a funny, um, moment that I had with the Lord where I was like, what about the pinky toe Lord? I said, the <laughs> pinky toe seems so just like insignificant. It just sticks there. It's like to test furniture. That's what it's like for me because, <laughs> you know, to see <laughs> walk by and it's like, oh, that's all that thing is good sure. for. And so one day I was thinking about this and just kind of having a funny moment with the Lord and Holy Spirit was like, why don't you look up what the pinky toe actually is for? And I went, huh. so I go to Google it. And of course, the pinky toe is amazing. That little thing mm -hmm. helps bring balance mind. to the whole body. Mm -hmm. Something so small that seems so insignificant. And so when I look at that, I, it makes me realize every one of us is needed. With what you have, bring that to God. Look for a place to serve in whatever it is that you love to do. Mm -hmm. And the confidence will come as you embrace who God made you as you embrace right. that unique person, because that's the other thing is we're all, we're all a little weird. I mean, I'm, I can admit, I am so very strange at times. And <laughs> thank God my husband loves me just the way I am. I think it's funny. I, I put this shirt on perfectly, perfectly imperfect. imperfect. That's literally me <laughs> because I know I'm not perfect. And I know I have quirkiness and I'm different, but I've, I had to learn to embrace who God made me. And the more that you run after God in relationship and open his word, if you've never been taught, if you've never been in a church that teaches or whatever, get yourself a Bible that is easy to read and understand mm -hmm. and dig into it and look at all of the promises that God has for us. Look at what God says about you, that you are fearfully and wonderfully fearfully made. made. Mm -hmm. And he knew you in your mother's womb before you were born. He formed you. All of those things are promises for all of us. And when we learn to embrace those things, we'll find who God made us and we will learn to be what's the word confident in that confident. And it's not a cockiness. Like I've had people look at me and, and say, Oh, wow. Like she's cocky or she's, she's this. I'm like, no, no. It's, it's I not. like to say um, it's actually a Godfidence. That's it's not it. even a yes. confidence. It's yes, a because God it's not me. Yes. I know who I am in him. In him. I have That's a God. I do not I love that myself. Right. That's a t-shirt. Oh my gosh. I need to get that made. I think it is a t-shirt. You know what? Is We're it really? Amazon. 
We're going to go to Amazon. And if there yes. is a god <laughs> shirt, we're going to throw the link into yes. the bottom here. That's amazing. God-fitted. And if not, God-fitted. we're making them. Yes. Yep. We're making them. Absolutely. <laughs> so I love how you said that. Now, another thing I wanted to add in there, because you're talking about digging into the word. Um, and I teach on spiritual gifts and I, and I, there's a lot of different online places you can go to learn your spiritual gifts. And, um, if you follow me or you go to my website, there's a spiritual gift assessment. There's a lot of different things you can learn about spiritual gifts. And some of our listeners right now may be going, what do you mean spiritual gifts? I don't even, I've never even heard of these things because there are people yes. that didn't, that don't even know. Yes. Um, and we're probably going to tack, tackle that in another podcast. Um, but yes, the short version is that we are all part of God's body. And just as we need the pinky toe, God (laughs) needs all of us. We all have a function and not all the functions are the same and not everybody has the same gift, Um, but everybody does receive a gift from the Holy Spirit. And that gift is where and how God wants to use you and your life and your abilities for the kingdom. Some have a gift of preaching, some teaching, there's administration, there's discipleship, there's shepherding, there's helps, there's service, there's faith, there's there's all miracles, there's all these different types of gifts. But what I wanted to say is that if this is the first time you're hearing, or you even know about gifts, but you're not sure what yours are, a lot of times I will tell women that I work with, oh, you're struggling with figuring out your gift and you're struggling with figuring out your passions. Go back to the little girl, go back to the little girl, go look back at your little girl before it's terrible to have to say, but before we kind of got tainted by the world, mm-hmm. true. were you, what were you, were you the kid who rescued every animal on the block and brought home <laughs> every stray animal? You know, were you the kid that sat up all your stuffed animals to play teacher? Right. Were you the kid that did everybody's nails? Right. When you got together for like playtime, were you the boss on the playground? Were you the one that said, no, this is what we're doing. Okay. That was me. Raise your hand. If you were the boss on the playground. Okay. I'll give you a little hint. If on your report card, it said things like talk too much. You probably the gift, the gift of teaching. Okay. Yay. All of us talk too muchers. Right. Go back to the little girl because the whole, it's not like the Holy Spirit magically imparts. And now all of a sudden you'll have this amazing voice that you didn't have. That's right. The whole, I want you to think like the Holy Spirit as like this amplifier, the gift when God, and you said the scripture best, God knit me together in my mother's womb. It's in Psalm. And as God was creating me in my mother's womb, these gifts were there. The seeds yes. of these gifts were there yes. and they start to bloom a little through your life. The Holy spirit is like the miracle grow and the sun and the water <laughs> like you know, that, really yes. gets them going. So yeah. look at your natural tendency. Were you, did people used to say to you, God, you're such a leader. You were part of DECA. You were part of student government. You have that leadership ability. Were you the one that was bossing around everyone on the playground? Were you the one that hosted all the tea parties and you love to always be pretending you were making things? Go back to the little girl because those gifts were there. They were there already. And it's so beautiful because a lot of times what women do is, is they think to themselves when I work with them and they'll say things like, gosh, I remember I used to love to do that. Yeah. Life got busy. I got married. I have kids. I have a job. I don't, I don't do that anymore, but yeah, I used, I used to love to do that. There's a really good chance that is an anointing from God and it's time yes. to reflourish that. Yes. Yep. Right. I love right? that. So I, I love, I just love how everything you're sharing. I love the whole story. So tell me a little bit about So you and your husband are family pastors and -hmm. you have your podcast and you've been able to step into your speaking. So tell me a little bit um, with the dynamic between you and he, okay. When you, when you, do you get invited to speak? I know you do the podcast together. Do you get invited to like speak and preach together or does he do stuff with the men and you do stuff with the women? Like how does it work? Do you work as a team or just the podcast is really the team? Right now, the podcast is really the team, unless we're, um, say, counseling or helping couples okay. privately. But as far as speaking, 
that would be fun. I think we've, we've talked about the possibility of if that ever happened, we'd love to speak together. Um, but right now it's just the podcast. He helps, he does a lot with the men. I help out with the women and, um, stuff like that. And I've, I've been invited to speak at a couple of, uh, women's events and stuff like that, which is great. But right now it's pretty much just the podcast that we do together, which is. And who, who was the speaker first, so to speak? He was. He was because I, I wouldn't do it for a long time. <laughs> I was too scared. So he was the speaker first, but then after a while, I kind of, when I started to really become Godfident and uh, I love that word now, that's my new word. <laughs> <laughs> when, when I, when that happened for me and I really overcame fear and God was making it very clear to me that that was something that he wanted me to do and that I, he wanted to use my voice. It was like, Oof. So I, I started with like videos and just doing things like that because I didn't have any place to actually speak. And eventually in our church, in the women's ministry, our men, our women's ministry leader, she's amazing. And she would invite me to, you know, take, have certain moments to speak and stuff mm -hmm. like that, which helped a lot and was I realized it was in those moments. I'm like, wow, I love to do this. Like mm. I love to, it has nothing to do with being seen. It has nothing to do with yeah. any of that. It's just, it's something about using the gift, doing what God has called you to do and knowing that you're helping somebody else right. to whether maybe get free or to just teach them who they are and all the things that God has for them. You know, that yeah. to me, that's the most gratifying part of it all. But yeah, he was the first <laughs> yeah, there's this this amazing thing when you are living and acting in your purpose. It doesn't feel like work. You don't get tired. Like it's just it's uh, it's like a glimpse of heaven. It's going to be so amazing. Um, tell me a little bit about your your personal relationship. What are some of the habits and rhythms that you have to really stay close to the Lord? And you know, for mm -hmm. some people, of course, it's you know reading the word, but for some people it's like I read the word, but I have to do it outside because I'm a nature person. For some people mm -hmm. it's about worship and I'm dancing all around my house. Yes. What is your I call it your spiritual love language, which is kind of your yep. spiritual temperament, the way that you connect with the Holy Spirit best. What is what is yours? And tell me a little bit about that. You hit it on the head when you said worship. For mm -hmm. me, it's always been worship. I've always been very musical and I'm a part of the worship team at church. I've been a worship leader. We've done all kinds of stuff in that, but that's always been like my, my vein. Like that's the place I can just turn on just instrumental music or whatever. You know, I have a whole worship playlist in my phone and I put mm -hmm. that on and a lot, whether it's just sitting with him or praying during that time, but I usually always have that on and then even when I'm reading my word, I like to have like a light instrumental in the background, or sometimes I go to my back deck when it's warm, it's not warm right now. So mm -hmm. it's not easy to do that. But in the summertime, I love to go out on my back deck with my word, my coffee and my two dogs will sit with me, which is cute. But worship is probably my, the, the main thing for me. It's just, that's that it's that place where I just go right in and it's just me and him. And so yeah. even driving in my car, I love it. Cause I'll have, I'll have worship on in my car and I'm singing. And then sometimes I have to pull over because I'm a blubbering mess. And ah. he's, speak, he's speaking to me or whatever. It's just, he's doing something in my heart and I'm just like, Oh, so <laughs> worship for me is probably, that's the big thing for me. That is your spiritual temperament. That is great. That is awesome. That is not my spiritual temperament. I love worship. Don't get me wrong. I love worship. I listen to it. But for me personally, I am like a word person. Mm. I can be studying and reading. I've got two different versions of the Bible open and a strong concordance or listening. I turn on like the talk radio and I'm listening to somebody mm, giving yeah. a message and, and the spirit will be like, you just heard that. Right. And you know, things happen. Um, yeah. And I listen to the instrumental behind, just like you said, if I'm studying, <laughs> I like to have like the instrumental behind, but Honestly, I think maybe two or three times in my life, in my life, Christian life, I have actually gone to tears in worship only like two or three times. It's wow. Like, 
Yeah, you're like, what? What's wrong with you? Um, it's just, <laughs> well, people I are made different. It, right. Okay. I love it, but it's not yeah. anything I've never, it just doesn't move my spirit. Yeah. But there are times I have been in the word and I have read something and highlighted it and read, and it puts me into a space of prayer where I'm just like, ooh, 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 ooh. right. Yeah. So okay. Everybody has a That's different, funny. I call them spiritual love languages or spiritual temperaments. Um, yeah. And everybody has a different, there's the nature people, there's the worship people, there's the word people, you know, there's the service people. Mm-hmm. So um, that's really another amazing thing. After you learn what your spiritual gift is, then you want to learn what your <laughs> spiritual temperament is. Yes. Um, I like you know, that. And then we look into the fruit of the spirit and how do we exemplify the fruit of the spirits? It's really this yes. big circle of how do I live a spirit filled life? Yes. Um, so that is I just. It's amazing. I love what you and your husband are doing. I love your story. I love that you have a BC moment, you know, the before Christ moment. And the, I just keep seeing it of like, just like the throwing off, right. It's like throw (laughs) off the towel and run into the warm water. Yes. What a beautiful, beautiful visual. Yeah. Full of confidence, Godfidence. Godfidence. Yes. Godfidence. Godfidence. <laughs> we got to go find that shirt. Godfidence. <laughs> Is there anything you want to make sure that um, our listeners know? Let's talk about where we can find you. Okay. So uh, Facebook, okay. Instagram. Okay. Uh, personally, I'm on Facebook. If anybody wants to find me personal, I do have a lot of my stuff on there too. Desiree Rosado. Um, our podcast is walk the talk with Des and Los. I believe it's at walk the talk with Des and Los on Facebook and Instagram and on YouTube. Same thing at walk the talk with Des and Los on YouTube. Okay. And yep. your, your podcast is through Spotify. Uh, it's actually Spotify, Apple, Google, Amazon. Oh, you're everywhere, girl. Yeah. Pretty much all the major platforms, yeah. all the major platforms yeah. walk the talk with Des and Los. Yep. Love it. Love it. And we're going to have that posted down below. What a wonderful, wonderful morning. I love spending this time with you. Do you want to close us up in prayer? Sure. Yeah. All right. Father God, we just thank you so much, God, for this time. Thank you for this moment, for the technology to be able to just share and talk and just talk about you and the amazing things that you've done in our lives, God. Father, I pray for every woman who's going to watch this, Father, that they would get something that would be able to shift their lives, God, and show them how they can be free, how they can have that Godfidence, Father, God, that you want them to have, that they will find their place in the body, that they will find their giftings and that they will run with them and they will f- do all of the things that you've called them to do, God, and that they will be the amazing women that you have made them to be, Father. We thank you, Lord, for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. (laughs) Thank you for joining us today. Be sure to like and subscribe, and you can find all the details about how to follow me or my guest in the links below.